Once Queen Elizabeth II called herself the last bastion of standards, prudent, intelligent, and calm, she was the epitome of continuity and constancy in a rapidly changing world. But for all her conservatism, the British monarchy has changed a lot even during her rule. And what will happen under the new king? If the changes that occurred under Elizabeth were rather a forced and reluctant response to external circumstances, Charles has the potential to initiate reforms himself. For example, he can reduce the number of senior members of the royal family from 23 to 7 people. According to experts, they will include the king himself, his wife Camilla, Prince William and his wife Kate, the queen's youngest son Prince Edward and his wife Sophie, as well as Princess Anne. There are several reasons to take this step. First of all, it will save budget money because fewer people will receive money at the expense of the sovereign grant or other public funds. Besides, Buckingham Palace hopes that it will be easier to maintain a positive image of the monarchy. Fewer representatives of the royal family means less media attention, fewer scandals and more control over what is said on behalf of the court. The possibility of changing the functions of royal residences is also being actively discussed. Buckingham Palace is not a very comfortable place to live, so Charles suggests significantly reducing the living space of the family. Now it is 52 rooms, and if this idea is implemented, the royal residence will look more like the Prime Minister's apartments on Downing Street. Official events and tourist excursions can be held in the remaining premises. Perhaps the role of the monarch in the political life of the country will also change. If Queen Elizabeth brilliantly managed to remain neutral, Charles copes with it much worse. While still a prince, he lobbied for his interests and spoke out on various political issues in personal letters to members of the government. These messages were published in the media and nicknamed the Black Spider Memos because of the peculiar handwriting of the monarch. Even Charles himself admitted that his attempts to interfere in public affairs irritated the British people and promised to act within the accepted norms when he became head of state. But only time will tell whether he will be able to restrain himself. The duties of the king are weekly meetings with the prime minister, the right to formally appoint the head of government, open parliamentary sessions, approve laws and official appointments, receive credentials of foreign ambassadors, and meet world leaders during their state visits. Charles may well become a more prominent figure in these matters than Elizabeth was. Another aspect that will inevitably change under Charles is not related to his personality. We're talking about the borders of the Commonwealth of Nations and relations with the member countries of this alliance. Even during the lifetime of Elizabeth II, one state after another broke away from it, and this process will continue. In the constitutions of many Commonwealth countries, Elizabeth II is named as the head of state, and they will need to amend this basic law. The meaning of remaining under the shadow of the crown is not very clear, because it is obvious that modern Canada, Malta, South Africa, India, Pakistan, and other countries have nothing in common except the distant colonial past. And some states, such as Jamaica and Belize, even require London to pay reparations for colonial oppression. There is another scenario. Charles, a well-known climate change activist, can unite states with the climate agenda. What do you think? Which path will the Commonwealth countries and the British monarchy choose? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.